Good day, everybody. This is the Catholic Esquire. Please check out my website at catholicesquire.org. I'm making this video today. I usually make videos directed toward my towards my fellow Catholics who are interested in or searching out tradition, the tra the real and, and complete traditions of the Roman Catholic Church, the fullness of the faith. But today I'm really making this video for anybody and everyone who wants to uh, try to find some answers to certain problems going on right now in the world. I don't know about you, but I've noticed that there's a lot of depression, anxiety, impending senses of doom out there, uh, this idea that society is going to collapse and that the culture around us is completely rotten, disgusting. And worst of all, what people are thinking and telling themselves is that there's nothing we can do about it. I feel so helpless and hopeless. What am I supposed to do? And this attitude, this feelings, this this spirit of of hopelessness affects our lives, the way we talk to other people, our attitude towards our, ourselves, our attitudes towards others, our life, our jobs. And it's affecting our ability to carry out our duties in life. And more importantly, I mean, it even filters up into higher reaches of society and, and affects those who have authority in our society. And it turns into this big circular problem of hopelessness, despair, and sadness, and seemingly with no answers. Well, I'm making this video today because, not because I have all the answers. I mean, I don't have all of the answers. But one of the things I've been able to identify and pinpoint, and one of the biggest problems is, is a serious lack of faith. Now, problem number one is, is when you say faith, people don't even really know what that means. I mean, they kind of think they know what it means, but they don't know what it means. It's like, well, I have, I believe in God, or I believe Jesus died for my sins. Okay. That's a part of faith, but that's not all of faith. That still doesn't tell us anything, right? What does that mean? Jesus died for our faith, or died for our sins. Therefore, what? Why is that important? What happened? What would have happened if Jesus didn't die? You see, all these questions go along with that. And part of the problem is, is even people who claim to be faithful Christians, regardless of what denomination, I'm not just talking about Protestants. I'm talking about Catholics too. If you go down to your local Catholic parish you're going to find a severe lack of faith there. Even though I believe they have the potential and access to what they need to come to the true faith. Nevertheless, they disregard it, reject it. But this is a problem across the board, regardless of whether you're a Christian, whether you're a non-believer, atheist, whatever. It's lack of faith. And you're not going to get answers from things in the material world. What you will typically see are people looking for answers from drugs, alcohol, self-help books, counseling, um, uh, electing politicians. They get real involved in politics to the point where it consumes their life. I know I used to be there. It consumes their life because they feel that well, if we just change the the elected politician, you know that's going to help move our society in the right direction. It really won't unless you have faith. Without faith, it doesn't matter what politicians you have. If the if the politicians don't have faith, if our society and culture lack faith, it doesn't matter. Why is that the case? Because faith is the pipeline to truth. Truth is reality, ultimate reality. And that's what you're seeing when you, you see all this craziness going around around you, you know, boys thinking they're girls, two plus two equals five. Uh, everything's topsy turvy and, and people are getting very scared about this and, and, and it's giving people a lot of anxiety. Well, it's because they're, they're, they're divorced from reality. But we have to understand what divorce from reality means. It doesn't just mean that 
they've lost their mind and they're insane. You know, these are very otherwise very intelligent people who have the capability and ability to reason are still acting as if they don't. And you have to you have to ask yourself why is that the case now? Especially now, there seems to be this this uptick in 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 this. Well, ultimately, it's because we are just a little piece. We're just a little corner of a much, much bigger war, a spiritual war. It's been happening since the beginning of time between the angels and the demons, between God and the devil. That's an invisible war. We can't see it with our eyes, but it's very, very real. And we know it's real because it's spilling over into our material world. I mean, we see it with the rise of satanic images and ideas everywhere. This idea of, of, of people supporting and actually encouraging the killing of unborn babies. I mean, to a rational mind, you would think that that's completely insane. Which, of course, it is. And yet, very rational people will give you reasons for it. Otherwise, rational, rational people will give you reasons why it's okay to kill unborn babies. That's just one example. We see it in, in so many other things. It's been very clearly played out since 2020 with this whole virus thing. I mean, the point, and, and I don't want to get off on tangents. The point here is that we need to find this pipeline to the truth. And you can't just say the truth is reason because it's more than that. Reason will only get us so far. Pure human reason only gets us to figuring out things in the material world. But if the if the battle, if the war is non-material and spiritual, then you can see why that's going to be insufficient. What we need is a pipeline to ultimate reality, ultimate truth, and that is only through Jesus Christ. How do we know that? Well, because that's what's been divinely revealed to us through sacred scripture and sacred tradition. Now, this obviously causes a roadblock for some people. And for a variety of reasons, you can't put everybody in the same category. Some people only believe reality is what they can see, touch, feel, and see in front of them. Materialists. That's a big part of it. Other people claim to believe in God, but don't really know who he is. They think, oh, well, maybe... Maybe there's, um, you know, Allah or uh, the Buddhists are uh, tapped into something, some higher spiritual reality or Wiccan. You know, we can somehow sense uh, get in connection with the spirits of the world, whatever. There's with these people, there's a, a desire to engage the, the supernatural, but they don't know how to do it. Other people are self-professed Christians. Um but who reject Christ's church. Well, the problem, the problem with that is, is that they're pointing in the right direction, but they're rejecting ultimately everything Christ has revealed to us. There's much more to revelation than even what's in Holy Scripture. Every, of course, Holy Scripture is uh, a big part of that, but there's also the sacred tradition part that we receive that, that has been handed down to us for 2000 years guided by the Holy ghost. Regardless at this point, what I want to say is that the problem is a crisis of faith and, and faith is, is much more than just saying words. Faith is, it, 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 it's it's a it's a virtue, and it's something that has to be developed, and it's something that has to be developed habitually. And it takes work. You know that's why Saint Paul says we have to run the race, we have to finish well. Well, what is he talking about? Well, he's talking about your whole life. Your your life has meaning. It has purpose. It does, but it it it's it's it takes your whole life to the very second. You breathe your last breath. Now, how do you become 
more holy? How do you run that race? Well, you need grace. How do you get grace? You get grace from sacraments. That's what sacraments do. They give grace, right? It's been revealed to us. We know if the Roman Catholic Church is taught uh, that there's seven sacraments. Not everyone's going to receive every sacrament, but the sacraments are there uh, for everyone, especially baptism, uh, Holy Communion, Confirmation, uh, Confession. These are gifts from God to help give us the grace we need to run that race. But importantly, it also gives us the, it helps us grow in our faith and ultimately hope and charity as well. And these are, these are what we need in the world today and that we lack. We lack hopelessness, we lack hope, we lack charity, and we lack faith. And so if you're trying to understand why everything around you seems to be going topsy turvy, crazy, insane, nothing makes sense to you. It's because we don't have faith. We're divorced from this pipeline to the ultimate reality. You have to get back in that pipeline. And the way to do it is through Christ and his church, which gives us the means to access the graces that Christ wanted to give us by his passion and death on the cross. And that's what I wanted to finish today with. And this is very important. This is something that that Buddhists can't give you. This is something that Dr. Phil can't give you. This is something medications can't give you. And it's not something that you can't find at the local mega church down the street. The sacrifice of the Holy Mass. That is the representation of what Christ sacrificed on Calvary that he gives to us as a gift that we can make ourselves present for. And by receiving Holy Communion, we are communing with God himself, because we do believe that that host that we receive a Holy Communion is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. By consuming him, you are making the ultimate uh, intimate connection with God that you possibly can. You're bridging that gap between the supernatural and the natural. You're, you, you bridged it right there, and it happens every single time at the sacrifice of the Holy Mass. And the most perfect expression of that sacrifice of the Holy Mass is the traditional Latin Mass, because at the traditional Latin Mass, the notion of what Christ was doing on the cross is preserved and recognized, and for which we are giving proper thanks for, his sacrifice, because he paid the debt that only he, God could pay for the infinite, infinite offenses against him committed by mankind. Now, I don't want to get too deep theologically here. My whole point is, is that if you're looking for an understanding, reasons, explanations for all the insanity around the world today, it's because of lack of faith. There is no other answer. You can, you can look to politics, you can read books, you can get into spiritual Wiccanism, take drugs all you want. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. You have to grow in faith. And that's something that I can sit here and talk my mouth off for the next three hours and try to explain to you what the faith is. And it's not going to penetrate unless you're willing to open up your mind and your heart to it. Because it comes to you through grace. That's done through the Holy Ghost, not by me. All I'm doing today is just trying to give you an explanation for what you're seeing around you and a plea that if you do not attend a traditional at Mass, if you don't know how to get there, if you have no idea what to do, please reach out to me. You know, reach out to your friends, perhaps, that, that, that attend these Masses. Ask them, what do I do? How do how how can I access that that grace that'll help me give help me answer the some of the greatest and most important questions that anyone can ask, and that is, what is the meaning of my life? And once you answer that question, you will have hope again, 
but that's also going to require faith. So I know it was a lot in the video today. It's just something I was thinking off at the top of my head. Um, I hope it helps. Please like the video, share it. If you think someone may benefit by it, please share it. I wish you all the best. Have a great day.